Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is once again in Congress speaking about her public banking bill, which we're gonna give you details on in just a few. And she became despondent because the questions she was receiving from Republicans had literally nothing to do, it was actually in the bill. I can imagine that would be frustrating. Here's how she responded to it. Uh, I learned a while ago, you know, when I first got to Congress, I thought, man, people definitely study what they're talking about here. Then I got here and I realized that people don't even, a lot of my colleagues don't even read the bills that they are commenting on. But for anyone who is curious, it's right here at the desk. We're making lots of statements that have nothing to do with the legislation. And uh, frankly, you know, if I made comments that very publicly demonstrated that I didn't read the legislation I was discussing, I'd be embarrassed. But that is an aside. It's an aside. I appreciate it, <laughs> Ben. What do you think? Oh, that brilliant sister. She just tapped into the essence of everything we we're talking about right now. The confidence of their mediocrity, man. Like these mm -hmm. fools get into Washington D.C. and they're like, oh. We're rich, we're conservative, we're white men. All we have to do is conjure up anger like Lindsey Graham did on behalf of Brett Kavanaugh, who conjured up anger on behalf of trying to protect himself from his history. And that's all they had to do is go up there and be angry. And he became the the Supreme Court justice who loves beer, right? But no, <laughs> you know, when we talk about the discernible skill set of these politicians, like they're sorely lacking, and I would be for one embarrassed to be known to be this stupid as an yeah. elected official in the United States of America. Yeah, AOC well, said it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Ben, that is um, what you just described there makes total sense to me and is also a reason why I guess you're never gonna make it in Congress, baby. Nah. Because <laughs> you have to have, like you think, oh, you man. think that Louis Gomer like, finishes a speech, goes back to his office and is like, I worry I really didn't sell that. <laughs> My constituents have high expectations of me. Am I making good on those? No. John, <laughs> John, I get, I get, I get, if I edit my podcast incorrectly, I'm like, <laughs> I'm really disappointed <laughs> in myself. I've fallen. Yeah. These people <laughs> get up there and literally would lead to the, there was no necessary apocalypse necessary. They would be the cause of the apocalypse and expect us to thank them. That's what we're yeah. dealing with here. No, if, I, if I was a senator and I like tried to disprove climate change by bringing a snowball onto the floor, I would hide in the woods for the rest of my life. But these people can't be shamed, which means that while what AOC said there, I totally agree with, I get it. I wish that shame worked in government. These people cannot be shamed. Uh, Marjorie Green, she knows who she is to the extent that she can know anything. She knows who she is. She's fine with it. I don't know how, I couldn't bear a few seconds of it, but she knows who she is. And so, uh, no, uh, they look, not reading the bill is bad enough, or I would say more importantly, not being familiar with what's in the bill so that you can ask intelligent questions. Um, the bigger issue, of course, is not engaging with the actual issues that face the American people. So now we're gonna turn to the opposite of that, the, I don't know, four people in government who try to, including AOC, who held that hearing on the public banking bill. So let's jump ahead a little bit and find out what it's intended to do. Hopefully some Republican Congress people watch this video so they'll know too. The Public Banking Act would foster the creation of public banks across the country by providing them a pathway to getting started, establishing an infrastructure for liquidity and credit facilities for them via the Federal Reserve and setting up federal guidelines for them to be regulated. Essentially, it would make it easier for public banks to exist and it would give some of them grant money to get started. So the basic idea is to make it possible for state and local governments, local businesses and people to do business with public banks, which theoretically would be more motivated to do public good and invest in their communities than private institutions, which are out for profit. The intent of the proposal is to try to guarantee a more equitable recovery from COVID by providing an alternative to Wall Street banks for state and local governments, businesses and ordinary people. And by ensuring such banks provide services to historically excluded and marginalized groups. The public banking bill also does double duty as a climate bill. It would prohibit public banks from investing in or doing business with the fossil fuel industry. And so as with many other pieces of legislation that um, you know, either Representative Ocasio-Cortez or other members of the squad have put forward. They are solving problems, addressing actual issues out there with an understanding of the sort of intersectionality of public policy, how it affects different areas and trying to make 
regardless of what area of the economy that they're working on, whether it's public housing, public banking, whatever, they're also understanding that all of this interfaces in some way with the climate crisis. And so they have an understanding of that. I can't say that every detail in this legislation is perfect. That's beyond my pay grade, but it certainly seems like a good idea worthy of serious discussion in Congress. What do you think? I consider the motivation behind banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and the fact that during the pandemic, banks like that made somewhere between the tune of 24 and $32 billion in overdraft fees during the pandemic. We need public banks. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say. We need public banks. Jesus. Okay, well, let me give you um, just a little bit more. This is uh, so Rashida Tlaib, also um, you know, writer of the legislation, uh, said it's long past time to open doors for people who've been systemically shut out and provide a better option for those grappling with the costs of simply trying to participate in an economy they have every right to, but has been rigged against them. A great statement by Representative Tlaib. Public banks are uniquely able to address the economic inequality and structural racism exacerbated by the banking industry's discriminatory policies and predatory practices. Public banks empower states and municipalities to establish new channels of public investment to help solve systemic crises. So there's another area, again, I know there's people who somehow have convinced themselves that structural racism doesn't exist. But banking is certainly one of the areas that 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 it has existed in since there have been banks. Right now, by the way, 6% of adults don't have any sort of bank account. This could help in many parts of the world, including in, in many parts of the country, including in rural parts of the country. Uh, to fill that gap. So it, it th- this is what we need. We need an endless string of pieces of legislation like this. But again, like the the like in, unless it's put in the reconciliation bill, is it gonna pass with a filibuster? Why would a Republican turn against this? I don't know, but my gut says that they will. John, I've I've been unbanked before. Um I have been um one of the people who had to stand in line and check cashing store before. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because a lot of times in these conversations, we really uh, don't let, you know, we don't really identify with how many people actually go through these things, right? Yeah. And and I want everybody to just take a minute and ask yourself how much money you would have left over if the banks did not take overdraft fees um, from you over the last five years and what you could have done with that. That's why we need public banks. And this is what makes Republicans so insidious. While we laugh at their stupidity, their stupidity is a facade to make sure that we never really get some public goods like a public bank. Exactly, exactly. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.